everybody, Becca C. Smith here, and today we're starting an adventure. I am going to attempt to write, edit, beta, edit again, then send to a professional editor, cover design, market, record the audiobook, and publish a book in 90 days. I am writing Geraldine's Alley. It is a screenplay that I wrote 20 something years ago. I have just written the most detailed outline ever. <laughs> and I plan on making this novel somewhere around 50 to 60K, so it will be on the smaller side. So I am definitely trying to do things to make this an actual feasible goal. This is it. This is the intro to the crazy ride that I'm about to take and having all of you guys join me on it. Here we go. Drafting Geraldine's Alley, the book right now. I'm officially halfway through. I came up with a fun idea. Wouldn't it be cool if I hired an artist to do drawings for the chapter headings? So I reached out to Phoebe Wood and she agreed to do the chapter headings. So I am so excited. She did some sketches. I'll show them here, some ideas. A kind of, I just said I wanted two people dancing. This is the concept we came up with. I am so excited, but I have 10 more days to go. So let's do it. I got an email from Austin Film Festival saying that my screenplay, Jerry Lane's Alley, <laughs> made it to the second round. <laughs> it did not make the semifinals, it made it to the second round. That's their version of the quarter of quarterfinals. But out of 13,000 something scripts, Geraldine's Alley made it to the second round. That just gave me like a boost of, I don't know, like it made me feel like, I, I know you shouldn't feel validated by contests and things like that, but it did. It kind of gave me like a sense of validation, at least in the sense that the story is strong. So it just makes me more excited to get this book out. I'm gonna get back to writing, but I just thought you'd like to know. I finished. <laughs> I finished the first draft. I got to admit, I got a little teary-eyed, not because I feel like I landed the ending, but because it just, because I do think I'll have to tweak it. But the emotion, the raw emotion of what I was feeling when the book ended felt really, I don't know, it just, I just got overwhelmed. I got overwhelmed and I haven't felt that in a while. And it was really, it was really good. Of course now <laughs> I have to do all the editing, but normally I take about a month to breathe and to not think about the story and you know, just give it some time. But because I'm doing this in 90 days, I can't do that. So I'm giving myself a couple of days. I am going to count them in my 90 days because they are part of the process. And then I have a week of editing and then I send it to the betas. Oh my God, it's going so fast. I can't believe I'm actually starting editing. Kind of freaking out, because I really only gave myself five days to do it before betas. Hopefully I'll catch any of the big broad stroke stuff and then they can catch the rest. I don't know, anyway, I got five days, I'm gonna start. 
So far, so good. I've had to add some things. I'm not liking chapter one. I don't know what it is. It feels clunky. Then chapter two through 10 are better. They need some work, but they're, they're in good shape. But chapter one, man, I'm gonna have to go back to it. I think I'm gonna stop for the night, but I have a little partner with me that's been here the whole time. He's being so sweet. He really wants to be a part of this book, I've decided. But the reason why I'm stopping is because this next chapter, I know I need to rework and add some stuff. And I just don't think I have the brain power to do it. It's almost nine o'clock and I've been working all day. So I'm a little fried. This is why I need the betas because I just don't have any perspective. Last night, I didn't get through all my word searches, but I did think of some scenes I wanted to add. So that's what I've been doing for most of the day today. We're well into the afternoon now. Five days, 10 to 11 hours a day of editing. Now, this is kind of an experiment, even though I'm putting all my effort into this book. I don't want it to just be an experiment. I want it to be a good book especially since I'm publishing it. And so the only way that I know how to do that is I had to rethink my strategy. I was going to be giving it to eight beta readers tomorrow. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give it to five of the beta readers. Now here are the beta readers I'm giving to it first. Kate Cavanaugh, Emily Bourne, Cache Warren, my mother, <laughs> and my sister. So then I'm gonna take all of their feedback implement it, and then I'm gonna give it to the other three betas. It's kind of like I just need to have two sets of betas because I didn't, I wasn't able to give myself that month rest that I normally do. Now, I'm gonna count these days. I'm giving them seven days to read it, so I'm gonna count them, but I need a break. Okay, time for that break. I just got home from the doctor, and when I was in the doctor's office, I got an email from Phoebe saying that she's sending me the first uh, five chapter headings that she illustrated. This is the choices for the underneath. I like the black, I like the moons. Okay, this is it. Now scrolling down. Oh my God, yes. Bingo. <laughs> bingo and bingo. Perfect, perfect. Oh God, I love this so much. Mm, yes. Oh my God, yes. Ooh. Oh my God. This is happening. Like, this is making my book real. Well, I'm really nervous on how people are going to like this book. My mom did text me to say that she finished the book. So I'm about to call her, we're about to hear her reaction. Now I have a mom meter. Mom will like everything. That's just a given. She will love anything that I write. That's because she's the perfect mom. So I've learned to interpret her reaction. So if she's like, oh, I really liked it. It was very good. That means it needs some work. <laughs> it needs a lot of work. If she's excited, like, I loved it. It was so good. I like, and then points out a couple things, like, you know, she liked this part. She loved it when I did this. Then I know I've got something workable. If I call her, and this is the ultimate. I know I've succeeded on every level when I call and she's crying. She's like, oh, you're a genius. <laughs> I'm not, by the way. <laughs> but when she says things like that, then I know that, oh my God, like it's good, it's golden. I don't think I'm gonna get that reaction just because I just don't. Hopefully it's the middle one, but even if it is the first one, I kind of know I need to work on it anyway, so I'm not too, too worried about it, but it, it'll be interesting to see. So let, let's see, shall we? Hey, it's mom. I just finished the book. Absolutely fantastic. I loved it, loved it, loved it. 
You probably already knew that, but it's true. <laughs> okay, call me later. Bye. Hi. Hey. So what did I you? I've just been waiting for the call. What do you I think? I loved it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. I really and I love the uh, description of the dress. Yeah. That, that's the dress you're making, right? <laughs> yes, I haven't started it yet, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try and make it. First off, we said that I loved it. <laughs> Yay! I like, like all of the things I love. I loved Geraldine, like as a character, she was great. And then I loved all, I liked the romance with Josh was so cute. And I love her grandma. Anyways, it was just everyone I loved. All of the characters were great. I felt at the end that Rachel, like, I didn't think you were going to be able to sell me on her redemption. And you did. So like, the characters were phenomenal. So overall, I really liked the story. Um, originally when I started, I was kind of like, oh snap, this doesn't seem like my type of book. I don't know what this will be. Um, and by the end of it, I remember feeling like, yo, this makes me really happy. Like I have like this big smile on my face. Like it was a really feel good read. Okay. So I like that. Like, I like that, like, at the end of it, it was like, oh, that was a cute little positive. <laughs> I like, like, that. that's how I felt. My first point, oh, just basically that I think the book just needs a, a little bit here and there that needs to be added in just to tie like, all the pieces together a bit more because, like, the book is good. Like, it's really good on its own. Um, I really, really enjoy all the descriptions. I like I can see everything very clearly. Um, I especially like the parts where Geraldine imagines book characters coming to life. I, I don't know, there's this part in it where it just seems very magical when you can see it. Like once you've seen it a few times, you know when it's going to happen. And her demeanor shifts. She seems a lot more confident when she's talking to the book characters. And then you can tell when something is real because she's not as confident she's a different person. I think there was only one like overall scene or chapter that got me and that was um when her grandma leaves and then um they go over it was almost like immediately after we've had the emotions of leaving mm -hmm. um they're over at the house and it feels like it didn't that's the only scene that like the pacing that's the part that's hard about a script because it's like you just cut to a scene. Like, it's like time passed. Okay, we're now go having dinner. And so like in a book, you're like, well, I have to. Yeah. yeah, you would have like a little bit more of a montage bit of her like doing all this stuff, which it was just condensed into one sentence. In right. comparison. And I was like, I felt kind of emotional whiplash, but. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I missed that read a little bit then. Oh, so the alley itself to me, I felt like needed a little bit more. Like outside of knowing that it was scary, I wasn't sure why it was so scary for her outside of it being dark, if that makes sense. The Ellie was going to play a huge role where she had to really fight against it. And it's sort of said in the book that it is like the combination of all her nightmares. But she never has a nightmare about the Ellie. I didn't understand what was really going on there. So yeah, the imagery of the alley was good. I was confused if she was actually going through the alley to get home or just passing it to get home. Um, so that was a little bit confusing. I think also like the part with um, the tarot cards with the um, soon to be grandpa. Is that something? Okay. <laughs> okay, got it. So that one I was kind of, so it just ended up being that whole sequence that I was just like, felt a little bit. Um, off and what did Buster see in the tea leaves like was he actually seeing something um I liked the progression of the main character um I thought like who she was in the beginning and who she was in the end I thought that it made sense like it didn't seem like rushed or anything like that like I thought that was really good um I liked the side characters um I thought they were all very interesting I thought the their purposes in the story fit very well okay um, if you move the part where she um wants to go into design school at the beginning that might give her like an outer goal like something for us to root for outside and then internally it might be that she wants to be brave you'll see the rest of them that i it's mostly just me reacting to stuff and it's just like gushing in all caps so like i loved it <laughs> Okay, well that makes me feel better. <laughs> Everyone debated 
liked the book to varying degrees. So that was good. There was no one that outright was all like, this is a mess. I don't even know what you're going to do. You know, my worst fear, of course, like this is just utter crap. From Cache, Emily and Kate, there was definitely a feeling of like they were enjoying the ride, but they felt like, where is it going in the first chunk? I did need to figure out, even if it's a simple plot, just something that makes people know that there is a goal that my character is working towards because the overall theme and purpose of the book is this character overcoming her fear to live life because she's just not living life. Everything scares her and therefore holds her back from everything. It's not really plot driven, <laughs> you know, but I understand that there needs to be something. There needs to be something there that drives her forward that people can hang on to, that they can, that they can follow. Even if it is about, even if the ultimate goal is about the fear, I know what I'm going to do. I'm very excited about it. There is one other thing that two other people brought up, so I am going to address it, and then I'm going to send it to another round of betas, three people. Today is day 36. The next five days, I'm going to be implementing all the beta feedback notes. finished a day early, so it only took me four days to get through the first beta round feedback because all I did was really just thread through all the scenes and add-ins and changes and rewrites that I needed to do. I just sent them off to the last three beta readers. Tomorrow we'll be going to the fabric district and I can actually buy the fabric to make this dress for the cover. We found the pattern stuck in here, but it looked open and it doesn't look like there's a lot here. So I think I'm just gonna risk it because this is it, this is the last one. I'm just hoping and praying that it's uh enough. We are back from downtown and I already cut out the pattern. I'm going to make a stretch bodice shirt and then a giant flowing skirt. So I got the fabric. It's got all these sparkles in it, which is probably gonna make our entire apartment sparkly. I got extra, so I'm gonna try out this bodice first. It is a new day. Yesterday, all I pretty much did was get some stuff cut out. Not the skirt, just the bodice. But I'm gonna get started today. Uh, let's make this bodice. I finished the top. It looks pretty good. Got the pointed sleeves. Yay. Now on to the ginormous skirt. Okay, it's hard to see in this light, but I did finish. Got this long train coming behind in the sparkles. And then I'm just gonna have to get a giant hoop skirt to make this very round and bell-like. But it is done. Now for the photo shoot. I decided I do not like the top that I made. So I had an idea. This is a top that I've made before, it's sort of fitted. I think that'll work better with the skirt. I finished and it. I tried it on. I did not, I'm not showing you the try on because I'm gonna wait for the photo shoot for that. But it worked 
perfectly. We are ready. We are officially ready for the photo shoot. I'm all dressed up. We're getting the photo shoot ready. I look like I should be stepping out of a horror movie, like I'm some teacher that's like... You look like an Amish superhero. I'm, <laughs> I'm an Amish superhero, yes. The whole cover is a silhouette. I've always wanted to have a hoop skirt. <laughs> I'm taking up half the apartment. But Stefan is getting ready. That's where I'm gonna be standing, where the cat tree is approximately. See how he's already in silhouette, so it's gonna be perfect. Yeah, you like, oh. Oh. Okay. yeah. Uh, all right, here we go. Yeah. But it does give you a little bit of sway. I mean, that's a pretty oh, easy wow. silhouette cutout right there. That would work. The hair is creepy. My problem with the hair is in silhouette, you just don't know what it is. If you had the hair down and it was dark, it would at least look like long hair. Does that make sense? Like if you can see, if you want to look, this is the rough <sighs> CG thing that we made. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a model that we used to try and yeah. um, approximate you. So we just took this photo. Um, to put the real you in here. So now I'm just gonna import them into Lightroom real quick. I previously read it as a screenplay. And um, and so the entire reading of it, it just felt like, oh wait, I know this story really well. It's all very familiar. It's interesting, okay. <laughs> it was so interesting. I love the title. <laughs> Every writer, like you and me, <laughs> should write a screenplay and then turn it into a book. Right? It helps. It's uh, I uh, I think when my when I previously read it, um, one of my bigger uh, notes to you was that the imaginary like book characters need to be more present. Um, and Did so, that though? Um, and yeah, no. And so I think I felt like in this draft. Oh, okay. <laughs> I listened to that note. <laughs> I, know, I, was, I was really happy about that. I got to tell you, it's one of my favorite books that you've written. Really? Really structurally, um, like the detail. It, right. It's like, so I mean, you know, I love the Riser series, but mm -hmm. this is grown beyond Riser. And, uh, and, uh, and you made me tear up a number of times. So. Oh, good. <laughs> You, you have to give you have to give your protagonist a fear even if it's not a real fear if it's an inner, inner fear right. and you made it into a an inner fear that became an outer fear which through the magical realism um but i was like yeah now she has she has the real life goal the right. real life dream that she will never actually achieve without right. overcoming her actual fear right that's what so I that want. Is, good. Yeah, and, and she didn't, and she probably never made that connection. Geraldine, like, she's right. only in her 20s. She would never have put the two of them together. Yeah. She would in their 40s. She's like, oh my I know. God. <laughs> so true. So in general, you're saying, like, maybe even play up a little bit more of the fantasy elements. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, because um, because uh, th there, there is that part of me that like I couldn't remember precisely if she had shot her gun or not, and so I was like, it, it, it was like um, so I was questioning is 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 there what what is what is the the, the What's real well an unreliable narrator yeah exactly yeah but no it, it, I thought that uh, it's a it's a great fun read I'm up early this morning because so I was going to start editing and something occurred to me that should have occurred to me ages ago. I don't even know why I didn't. When I wrote the script, the screenplay, it's a magical realism book and Geraldine finds that the only friends she can really trust that she really wants to have in her life are characters from books. And I picked all bu public domain books. <laughs> so we've got Edmond Dante from Count of Monte Cristo, Emma from Emma, 
there was one other book that is kind of vital to the book. I don't want to say what it is because I'm having to take it out now. <laughs> After going through two rounds of betas, I just suddenly realized I can't have it in there because it was published after 1923. So it is not public domain. So I decided that I'm gonna make it just as personal. I am going to name the book, I'm gonna switch it out obviously, and it's going to be a book that doesn't exist, a made up book, a book that maybe I will write in the future. <laughs> Let's see how I do. Let's see how long it takes to put in these notes or changes and I'm gonna get going. Basically the last three, four days, I've just been searching filter words. I went on a couple blogs and just made a con comprehensive list of filter words and that's what I've been doing. That takes a long time because I tend to abuse the filter words. It is day 51 and I have to give Geraldine to the editor tomorrow. So I'm going to spend the whole day rereading the book one more time and then I'm gonna send it to her. Oh my God, it's happening. All finished with the read, close. And now I'm going to send it to Enchanted Ink Publishing. Ah! Oh my God, I can't believe it. I sent it. I am actually going to lay out the book in InDesign because I want to find out how many pages it's gonna be roughly so that I can give Stefan the template for the cover. Cause I need to, he needs to know like how big the spine's gonna be and you know, because we're gonna be doing paperback and hardback. So he really needs that template. And the only way to do that is to lay it out. hundred and ninety five pages so now I just have to do the template and send it to Stefan while Geraldine is at the editors I am working on marketing I'm um, oh hey bud oh, there we go I'm working on marketing copy I'm working on the blurb and I'm working on the elevator pitch so that is what I'm going to be doing for the next couple weeks while I wait patiently. I got the rest of the chapter headings back from Phoebe today. So I wanted to start putting my chapter headings together. It's easier to make chapter headings in terms of InDesign and EPUBs to make the whole chapter heading one picture. So I have to make the picture with the text. So now I just wait, wait, wait for the editor to return it to me. And then, ah, oh, I'm still working on the blurbs. I have been working on these blurbs for, what is it, two weeks now? I think I've written about seven of them. And my problem is, is the book, the book is magical realism, like I've said, but it's, it's, it's a dark comedy. Like it's a funny book, I hope it's funny. But the actual plot and the themes are pretty dark. So, you know, it's, it's a dark comedy. So when you're trying to write the description or the blurb on the back of the book, <laughs> It just all comes off as super dark. It's hard. I don't know. Anyway, I'm to have three. I'm gonna send them out to some people and I'll see what they say. is 
day 70 and if you can see from my computer i have got geraldine back from enchanted ink publishing i'm so excited as soon as i got the email i opened up the copy edit and kind of scrolled through just to get an idea of what kind of changes were made and i agreed with all of them so <laughs> that, that was easy and so then they sent me a clean copy tomorrow i think i'm going to be starting the audiobook are you kidding me and then i'll be done okay i'm gonna get to it I've done two audiobooks already and I had such a good time doing them so I was really excited to start this one and I am really excited but I don't know I feel really nervous but here let me show you the setup so I have my computer out here and that's because the fan goes off and that will absolutely be picked up on the microphone if I don't do that and then I have the wires <laughs> running to here. So I have a monitor and I have the book in InDesign on the left so that if I find any typos or any, you know, just errors that I need to fix, I can fix it directly into InDesign. And then I have Adobe Audition up and that's what I record on. I have foam on the ceiling, on the walls, everywhere. And then I have all of our clothes but this is my setup. I've got a keyboard in here. I've got the monitor, microphone, my spit guard, got a mouse. I got a dog in my water. <laughs> That's the most important thing. Look at Phoebe's artwork. Chapter one. Mm, I'm so excited. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. doing my chapter and I gotta let this guy in. He wakes up from his nap and he needs to be a part of the audiobook. But he's so far he's been very quiet and he just sits in the closet with me. So are you ready? You ready buddy? Let's do it bud. Let's make some books. Hey bud. All right, you make yourself comfortable. Yeah. What did you think? It was absolutely fantastic. Really? I cannot believe it. It's so much better than, I mean, the other one was great and I loved it. Yeah. This one is perfect. I love that new book that you put in. Okay. The one that you, that used to be yours. <laughs> I know. I love that part. <laughs> I recognized it right away. I said, you know that it's All right. It was a fascinating book to tell you the truth. Yes. I got caught up into the story right from the beginning because I love the fact that she has all these literary characters that she's oh. talking with. There. I especially love the guy, uh, Poirot. Oh, I just cried at parts. I, I cried when, uh, of course, I always cry when you say grandma because you yeah. use grandma's name. I know, I used her real name. Yeah. What I wanted to say, and that I, I, I heard from very, very big artists, okay? Uh, not, not writer, but filmmaker, but, but big artist. Uh, he said that he is doing films because he's living in fear and uh, he needs to light up dark corners. Oh, I like that. And 
we all have our allies. Yeah. In they are different in different time of life, different yeah. worries, different fears, different horrors, different stuff. We deal with this different. But you took this alley and you lit me up. <laughs> and that's what you see. I'm crying when I <laughs> say that. Okay. I have tears in my eyes because that's why I cry in your uh, reading oh. your book. Well, you know. So, and I am very tough, Robert. Don't I know you <laughs> are. <laughs> he's, he's. I well. know you. I cried when the. The guy that made you the painting. What's his name? Oh, Little Hank. Guy. Yeah. That made that me the painting. <laughs> well, he did make you the painting. It was for you. Mean you. Geraldine, Geraldine's yeah. painting. Sorry. <laughs> I always think of her as you. I know. <laughs> it's know a little too close, I think. So Although I, I do have one simple advice for Geraldine. Yes. <laughs> Take another way home. <laughs> no. I know she even said no. <laughs> you don't understand you don't understand Robert she can't I know she I know I'm just... we, when we have this dark alley that's what we need to do yeah. and that's beauty of it yeah okay that's, <laughs> that's the beauty of it. a lot of people is taking all the way right and well and, and F you them you okay do you, want me, don't leave. do you want me to get metaphorical? Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ali is a metaphor for Geraldine's inability to face other people. Period. Yeah. Rachel can't talk to the boy. Can't talk to almost anyone. Yeah. Um, it is the same alley. Only yeah. this one is physical. Yeah. And the other and is the talk. other is the harder one to get to yeah. face yeah. because this yeah. is the one that um you just simply do it. Anyway, everybody's supposed to read this book right now. I am on my last chapter. I've got my audio book buddy. As soon as I start recording, he just curls up on a little ball. Like he, he knows what I'm doing and he goes to sleep. <laughs> I finished! I finished, I finished, I finished! Oh my god. Last page. Last page. My little writing buddy. Okay, now that I'm done with the audiobook, I want, uh, that's essentially my proofread, so I'm going to export the book and upload it to KDP and to Ingram Spark for the hard copy. I'm gonna order the proof today! I finished the audio, but now I have to listen to the whole thing. I finished editing the audiobook. Now I have to export the files and then I can upload it to ACX. Woo! But I am gonna upload it to my website as well because like I said before, ACX has been taking a while to approve. So I want the audiobook to be available on release date. So it'll be available on my website until until ACX approves it and puts it up on Audible and all others, all other sites. I just got notification that the proof is in the mail. So I'm gonna go pick it up and I'm so excited to see it. This is the paperback. Coloring and everything works. It's so pretty. What do you think? Good coloring? Uh, I think it's too dark. Too I should, dark? Yeah, I should brighter. brighten it just a little bit. It's always too dark with them. I know. KDP creates space. I mean, I don't know. Let me see it again. I don't know, though. I think it's it actually... It films really good. It's weird. It looks really good on camera. Um, Geraldine's Alley. Good. 
book cover and art design by Stefan Fleet chapter heading art by Phoebe Wood dedication ah look at Phoebe's artwork look at it. wow and the drop case looks good or drop cap look at that they look fantastic <gasps> baby there it is Geraldine's Alley, written and narrated by Becca C. Smith. We got the proof, so this is the old one. It looks good, and I'd be happy with just this one, but we did it a little bit brighter, so. <laughs> okay, so these are back to back. They look almost the same to me. This one's the brighter one. I'd say go with the brighter. Yeah, what do you think, Stefan? Yeah, I like the brighter. We're going with the brighter one. Yay! This is it. I'm about to hit publish. I have been living, breathing, dreaming Geraldine's Alley nonstop. <laughs> it feels like forever. I've never done anything like this before where I've I mean, I've published books before, but never in a allotted time frame. I found that I really, especially during this crazy, insane time, I really, really enjoyed it because it, it was my focus. It gave me a purpose. It gave me a reason to do something during the day because I was kind of floundering and I had so much fun and I am so proud of the book. <laughs> So excited for people to read it. I mean, this is something, this is a story that has lived with me for 27 years and it lived as a screenplay. I never thought of making it into a book. And now that I have, I am so glad that I did. And actually it's going to make my screenplay even better because a lot of the choices that I made for the book are better for the characters in the story. So. <laughs> As soon as I'm done with this video, I'm going to weave those through the script and I feel like it's gonna be even stronger. I am so grateful that you've all come on this journey with me. <laughs> ah, okay, I'm gonna hit publish. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye.